In this video, I'm going to be showing you how can you master difficult dynamic range situations that you may find in lighting and landscape photography. How do you level those photos up using Luminar 3? We're going to get into that coming up. Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the channel where I post weekly videos on how you can improve your landscape photography through infield and post-processing tutorials as well as gear reviews. So if you're into landscape photography at all, consider subscribing to this channel. Now in this video specifically, we're looking at difficult dynamic range situations. How can you master that dynamic range using gradient filters in Luminar 3? We're gonna get into that and jump right into the computer. And like, welcome to this new studio space I have. I mean, it's minimal, I guess. I'll work on upgrading the look of it and everything, but I wanted to get this video out to you guys so that you could see how to improve your photos this week using Luminar 3 and how to make an impact on the overall quality of your images. So let's jump right into Luminar 3 and see exactly how we can master these dynamic range situations that you've probably found yourself in in a landscape photography situation. Maybe shooting at like sunrise and sunset and you have a really dark foreground and a really bright background. Those are difficult situations. Let's see how to master that in Luminar 3. All right guys, here's the photo that we're going to be working with on how we master these difficult situations. And as you can see in this image, we have a really bright sky. This was at sunrise in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And then down below, we have a really dark landscape because the sky was so bright. I wanted to get a good histogram and be able to get good light throughout. And you may be saying to yourself like, Dave, why didn't you just use a graduated ND filter in the field? And it's just because like, I'd have to get this out and I'm dropping filters all over the place. Then I have to find the right grad ND filter. Look at this, it's dirty. I have to spend time cleaning it off. I'm not about that life, look. I want to make this as simple as possible, get the job done and produce a quality photo. Luminar 3 is gonna help me do that using the graduated filter. Here's how we jump into that and correct this photo. And look, I'm not even gonna add anything to this image. I'm not gonna add a workspace. I'm not gonna do anything else to this image. All I've done is I had a little spot right here that I erased in this image. All I'm going to do to make this photo so much better is I'm going to go to add filters and then I'm just gonna scroll all the way down to adjustable gradient under the utility section. And I'm gonna click that. And what's gonna happen is I have multiple options that come up here. I have a top and bottom option that I can click through. And then I have exposure, contrast, vibrance, and warmth options in my adjustable gradient. These are all things I can use in Luminar 3 to level up this image and just one little filter that I have here. Think about all that you can do with all the other options that Luminar 3 presents. If you want your own copy of Luminar 3 to check out, it's linked below in the video description. It's the software that I use to edit my photos 90% of the time, so check that out below on with this photo though. So the top is gonna to be the top section of this image and it's really gonna be our sky section that we're going to be working with. So what do I wanna do with the sky? Well, it's a bright section, it's the brightest part. And what I want to do because of that is correct that by bringing my exposure down some and you'll see it's adjusting the top half of this image. And I just wanna bring it down a little bit maybe to like minus 60 on the slider to get some good detail and color in the sky. Then I'm gonna increase my contrast just to give it a little bit more pop in my contrast. I'm gonna increase my vibrance in this too to boost the colors up a little bit more. And then on the bottom of this photo, what I want to do is bring up the shadows on this landscape because I have this really cool effect going back using a telephoto lens. And if you want a full review on the telephoto lens that I use, the Sony 70 to 200 F4, click or tap your screen right here on the card that's showing up. But it just did a really good job of going back through and like stacking these mountain ridges together and providing a really cool landscape. And I also have this cool fog valley going down here. And it's really interesting, like when the Smokies get full, you have this fog that appears down in the valleys, hence the name Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which I mean, 
for obvious reasons. So I'm also going to increase the contrast on the mountains just a little bit more. I'll increase the vibrance just a little bit more and I'll just boost that exposure all the way up to 100 so we can really see down in the details. Now, what I'm going to do is you may be saying to yourself, look, like I see it, I get it, you improve the top, you improve the bottom, but that dividing line is still right in the middle of the frame and it doesn't look that good. Well, prepare yourselves because we're going to adjust that too. So to dive deeper into the adjustable gradient, I'm gonna to go to set orientation. And what that's going to do is bring up the original orientation of this gradient. And what I'm going to do is I can move this around. So just like you would in the field on your lens, I can click and move this around. If I was in the field doing this, all I would be doing with my grad and D filter is putting it over the lens and adjusting that horizon line with the filter right over the lens to darken the sky and lighten the landscape. So what am I going to do in post-processing? The exact same thing. So I'm just gonna click and drag and move that midline to exactly where I want it. It's gonna be like right on the horizon line of these mountains. Then I can elongate that effect by clicking and dragging the top bar, making it cover the entire frame. And then the bottom, I can do that as well, clicking and dragging the bottom bar all the way down. And then I can readjust that midline too to really make this photo sing and really make it come back to life. Now that I've done this, what I can do is go back to the top portion of my gradient filter and adjust that exposure a little bit more to get it exactly right, because it changed just a little bit as we adjusted the midline of the gradient filter. So I'm gonna go back to top and I'm gonna bring my exposure down just a little bit more and boom, there it is. There's our finished product. Look, it was that easy. And you may also be saying to yourself, well, like, okay, that's a straight line going across. If I wanted to set the orientation on a, like a diagonal horizon line or on the side of a mountain or something like that, just hover your mouse or your cursor over to the edge and you get this curved arrow. You can do the exact same thing as you could with a gradient filter in the field. So look, this is an easy way to level up your photos really simply and quickly using Luminar 3 and just one filter that they have. So imagine what you can do with the rest. Again, if you wanna check out Luminar 3, that's linked below in the video description for you to check out as well. And guys, subscribe to this channel if you found this interesting. If you want more tips on how you can level up your images using Luminar 3, click or tap your screen right here. If you want a different video from this channel, click or tap your screen right here. Here, if you want to easily subscribe, click or tap your screen in this top corner of the video. Thanks so much, guys. Can't wait to see you next video. Keep shooting, stay at it, hit those landscapes hard.